In this session, we're going to look at creating a graphical user interface for a password checker. We'll also add a little bit of a twist to it as we go. Once we've finished creating the GUI, we'll also look at labeling the objects correctly, ready for programming if you would like to apply it to JavaScript or another language. So let's get underway. First thing we need to do is actually create a new document. And in doing so, we're creating a HTML document. We'll give a title, password checker. We're also going to use a HTML5 compliant document. You need to give it a title and we're going to call it Amazing Password Checker. Now if we want to, we can actually make that a title. So we're going to put the H1 tag in and also turn off the H1 tag at the end. So this turns the heading on and turns the heading off, which makes it a lot bigger. After we've done this, we're going to insert a table. And the good thing about using Dreamweaver is it's actually going to write the code for us, so we're able to wrap and develop. So we're going to insert, and we're going to go down to table, and we're going to only have a two by two table, and at the moment we're going to start with 800 pixels. Now, if 800 pixels is too wide, you can always come back in and say, oh, I'll make it 400 pixels. And that's why I like having the split view. Now, in this top part here, we want to put the password or the username, and then in this box here, we'll have the password, in here we'll have the submit button and then we'll put something in here just to make it look really cool. So let's start by putting in a text box so we can actually have the username. So I'm going to go to insert down to form objects. In here you can actually find the text box, you can find the buttons, you can find radio buttons, check boxes, etc. I'm going to start with a text box and place that in there and I'm just going to change the field name here to user. And then I want to put another text box in this side. But this time when I insert the form and the text box, I'm going to actually put in password. Now you notice with password, it will help us when we type in it. It'll actually have the dots. So we've also seen that the text box is actually not large enough. It's sort of wrapping. So let's go change that. And let's change that to 600. And when we click over here, you notice that it's got form once more. Now, let's just save this. We won't go any further at the moment. We'll go File, Save. We can give it a name. I'm just going to call it Index, or you might call it Password Checker, and click Enter. And let's go have a look at this in a browser. So we can put a username. I can put Leon and Password. When I type in here now, you notice it's automatically come up with the dots for us to be a password. So once we've done that, we know that that text box is working. So I need to insert my submit button now. So I'm going to go up and select insert, down to form, down to my button area. And I've got button, submit button, reset button, file button. I'm going to use the submit button. It's much the same as a button, but it's already been coded for us with the word and ID of submit. And now I want to do this with a little bit of a twist. I've got a little bit of space over here. So rather than just having a straight user and password and submit, I want to make another level of security by inserting some radio buttons. And you may ask why you think this is another level. So I'm just going to insert a radio button. And then I'm going to copy that radio button and press enter and paste it again. And I'm going to put student and also staff. So that means you've got to have the correct username, the correct password, and also the correct type of person it is to get into this system. So let's save this and go to the browser and have a look at this in the runtime. So we can enter in a username, we can enter a password, we can select a radio button, and we can click the submit. We can also use a style sheet to colorize this, and you can learn that in another tutorial. But the last thing we want to do with this form now is actually label it correctly. This will enable code to identify the objects individually. So let's go into our code view and let's have a look at the different things that are here. So at the moment we have a text field for user and it has an ID at the moment called text field. What we want to do is change this ID to txt user and therefore if we want to talk to this text box we would actually call it by its name now txt user. With our password, much the same thing will happen here. Rather than txt password, I'm going to shorten it by go txt pw. Our radio buttons are a little bit different. They work in groups and you notice it's got an ID here of radio. If we have a look at our design again, you notice the first one is student, 
the last one is staff. So what we want to do is change its ID for the first one to student and I'm going to put a little R for radio button and then for the second radio button I'll put a little R and this will be staff. That way we can individually work out which radio button is actually checked by using code. The last one is the submit button. At the moment it has an ID of submit but what we normally use is the Hungarian notation so BTN and then camel case we could actually put um, submit then. So now what we've done is created a form that is functional. All the objects are working correctly. We've also gone through and labeled all our objects correctly by giving them proper ID names. Now remember that IDs need to be unique and only used once within a program. That's why they're called IDs. And once you've done this, you are ready now to go and code this interface or apply a style sheet to make it look really cool.